you know what I haven't done in a long time? It's a What's Old video. I can only hope that some percentage of people have the same <laughs> voyeuristic intrigue into what other sellers sell and what's going on as I do, and that this is in some way interesting. So we can kind of see how all kinds of selling experiments are panning out and some old standbys and things to look for and bolos as they say. Here's uh, some stuff that happened last week. Vintage crucifix, rosary, cross, stuff like this, in other words, Catholic stuff, um, Jesus stuff, has been selling super well lately. So I've been selling rosaries, crucifixes, little shrines and icons and angel protectors for the car, all kinds of stuff like this. I happened to buy a box probably, I want to say, a couple months ago at an auction, an outdoor auction that was all uh, religious items and everyone kind of like laughed and nobody wanted such a thing, but I, a good half of the box has sold so far. It's going, doing really well right now. So this is a great time of year and a great season of fear for um, said items. <laughs> Earth, Wind and Fire uh, album. This, you know, these, this person has not paid yet, I have to say, but um, this is just a kind of run-of-the-mill uh, vintage 70s vinyl. It is promo only. It's kind of like a greatest hits deal. I don't remember where I got it, but I'm almost 100% sure I did not pick this up on purpose. It came with probably some 78s that I was actually buying on purpose. But nonetheless, it sold. I mean, if they pay. <laughs> we'll see. So here's uh, part of my experiment with Magic the Gathering cards thanks to my friend Kathy in Brisbane. You can check out her channel at Strictly Anything Kathy Reese on YouTube. Uh, anyway, she was telling me about Magic the Gathering cards and I know eBay has been um, pushing them. I guess there's new ones or something, but I happen to have some old ones that I got for free that had just been sort of sitting around. So I decided to list them at Kathy's urging and they do sell. I mean, not for a lot. I just listed them at $1.49 and I, I ship them with a stamp, but hey, I got them for free and they do create movement in my store. So here's one that sold, here's another one that sold. And these were not to the same person. And along the same lines, I this summer bought a ton of new postcard, well, old, new to me old postcard stock. As I sorted through the thousands and thousands, there were lots that I would just normally put in lots. And I decided now that we have all these listings with the new eBay regime, I decided to just list a lot of them at $2 on the same principle as the Magic the Gathering cards. And in fact, they sell almost every day and keep my store busy and Hey, whatever, I make a buck or something for something I would normally have just recycled or whatever. So here's one from Oaxaca, Mexico. You probably know like Mexico cards aren't super desirable, but this one sold pretty fast. Um, here's another one. This is a hotel in Denmark, but it's just, it's just a modern chrome. Like I'll show you how... See, it's just like a modern, this might be from the 60s or 70s, probably 60s it looks like, but this is not particularly old or particularly special or in particularly good condition, and it's old. So that's cool. If you have lots of free listings and lots of free stuff or, you know, stuff that you might not normally bother to list, I think it is a good experiment to see if it gets your store going. Here's an actual sort of real item. This is just a, well, it's a piece of paper, <laughs> as are many things I sell. This is an old sort of Christmas card slash advertisement. Um, it's from a store in Boston in when, I don't know, probably the 20s or earlier. I might have known at some point, but anyway, it's just an advertisement of things they suggest you buy from them and a little 
drawing, you know, it looks like the 20s of their location. And this is, you know, still a recognizable place. It's like the church across from the common. So I don't know, somebody must have known about the store, like the picture or something. But that sold for, you know, 950. And I don't remember where I got it. Some auction lot, I would assume. A postcard. This is kind of interesting in that it's just a tiny Christmas card. Um, it's probably f like three by four, maybe. It's small. And it's been listed forever in a lot with another card. I kind of forgot that it was listed because of some because I misfiled something in my system and I listed it again and it sold instantly and luckily I caught that it was double listed and took down the other lot right away but I think that it was um, doing a better image of it that sold it uh, this is a scan actually and I just cropped it very close and also put something about it having bold graphics and I think that just caught someone's eye and it sold like the day I put it up for 950 for a tiny little used Christmas card. So good to know. Here's some vintage glass ornaments that are made in Austria. They're not super exciting or special, but somebody needs them. Here's another one of these $2 postcards. This one is a 70s chrome from Ireland. This is a cool piece. This is a booklet about, well, hygiene. It's really about disease prevention. And it's from Quebec in, oh, I think the 20s, 30s. Again, I probably knew when I listed it, but it's got really great graphics. As you can even tell from the cover, I mean, it's got this whole like retro arts and crafts style um, medieval thing going on with like this lettering and the colors and look the use of the I mean I know that's the American uh, Lung Association logo I and the Canadian Lung Association logo I think it might be something slightly different in Quebec I don't know but use of the logo in the decoration is pretty smart and it's just it's got these like sort of medieval illuminated um, drop caps and these great illustrations and this are, <laughs> this is weirdly close to my heart because um, in my career as a graphic designer I have designed a lot of books about tuberculosis and tuberculosis prevention it's kind of a weird thing it's not a niche I got into on purpose but I've done a lot of work for partners in health and for like different departments like uh, public health departments at Harvard and tuberculosis just comes up a lot so for some reason this really spoke to me <laughs> and then um just so you know kind of charming illustrations and I don't know and okay here's the coolest thing because <laughs> I'm very weird but this was printed in France and the publisher's name is Bigelet. Bigelet. <laughs> It's the best. And then this is the back cover, which is also very attractive. So that sold again really quickly, like one in a day or something after I put it up. And it came in a lot of generalized random ephemera that I bought at an auction. Here is a button. So here's, um, well, you don't know this yet, but I'm going to put up a whole ton of button videos soon. And um, this is an example of one button that sold for six fifty. It's got some um, oxidation issues, and it's not huge. It's it's one inch, which is I guess a reasonable size for a button. Um, this is a cricket cage, which means it's it's sort of three D. You can see how it's constructed. It folds up like an envelope with space in the middle like that and it's got a pierced front so you can sort of get a sense of the dimension it's kind of interesting it's sold for 650 so that's a single button and once you see my button videos you'll see what a small drop in the button bucket <laughs> one button is so you can sell you know a single non super duper exciting button for 650 you can sell uh, an exciting button for a hundred bucks. I mean, 
there's a range. Um, last week, I also auctioned off two boxes of postcards. So, you know, I was saying that I listed all kinds of like not that great postcards for $2, but I also had uh, <laughs> apparently 1,100 others that I decided not to list that way. And I sold them at auction in lots of 550. So this lot sold for $43 and we can look at how that went. So I started it, I started them both at $9.99 and they kind of bid up at the uh, at the end and the same person actually won both so that one sold for 43 and this one sold for 33.88 somehow and same person and so that was good again these were you know the postcards I didn't think were worth selling or the time to list necessarily even though I probably could have got two dollars a piece for I don't know maybe a, a quarter or half of them but it would have taken forever and some may never have sold and there's that sunk cost time so this is another way of dealing with postcards that you just don't feel like are very special <laughs> all right here's a postcard that a little more special and it's totally blank no uh it's uh this is so this i sold in the postal history category not in the postcard history in the like uh postcard postcard category and i'll show you this is actually really cool i'll show you this it this sold the day it was listed okay so it's not that exciting it's a one cent mckinley postal stationery blank um, U.S. postcard thing, but pre-printed on the back and not used is this message. We were notified that a case of contagious disease has been reported in your family. If you have any library books out, please send us the numbers, but keep the books until they have been fumigated, then return them to the library wrapped in paper. No fine will be charged on such books. And this is from the library in Worcester, Massachusetts. And presumably in 1918, though it's just 1901 and fill in the date. But I presume this is from the 1918 flu pandemic era. And I mean, what could be more poignant just right now? So that sold for $14.99 almost instantaneously. Maybe I could have sold it for more. I don't know. Um, on the other end of the spectrum in uh sort of postal history covers etc I also tried some auctions of um, covers that I didn't think were that exciting to sell you know on their own merit just to see what happened and again just to move things in the store now that we have all those zillions of listings so this one only went for its original price at auction of 99 cents it's this kind of mid-century queen elizabeth mixture with postal stationery just going from what devon to ireland so and it's it's morning stationery which is this black border that was something people did very big in victorian times but apparently still continued in non-victorian times Next, a baseball card and these. <laughs> oh God, I feel like I'm telling the same story over and over again. Um, I got a bunch of baseball cards for free because they came in a desk that I bought for my own personal use, weirdly enough. Antique, well not antique, but like a mid-century desk. And so I decided to just list them and put $2 on them. They're all from like the 90s, like early 90s, late 80s, some of them. And I, I did look them up, even though I'm not really a baseball card person. And I, I did like peg a few that were worth more, like in the, you know, 20 to $30 range and listed those separately. But most of them I just scanned really fast and listed for $2 shipped with a stamp. And a few sell every day, go figure. And again, those were free. So interesting experiment. Now I might start actually trying to know something about sports cards and buy them on purpose i don't know maybe we'll see this is a funny one this is a paper doll and it's like the most appalling baby <laughs> and uh he's got some great outfits though he's got a, a baseball outfit and a cop outfit and a clown outfit and a sailor suit like what more could a giant frightening baby need 
I got the I got this at Brimfield actually a couple years ago. This has been in my store forever and it finally sold. <laughs> uh, one person bought a whole bunch of records and uh, like, uh, you know, shellac 78 records. And what is kind of cool, and I, you know, I have to admit, I just learned about these relatively recently, but there are shellac records that are not 10 inches. And like this one is a seven inch, like, you know, like a modern 45 but it's it's actually shellac and it doesn't have a big center hole or anything a lot of the this one is double-sided but some of them are single-sided this one is single-sided so this is something to look for they actually mostly don't sell for that much but they're certainly cool these little wonder ones i've since like one you know it's like that thing with mattress stores once you see one you see them everywhere these little records once I found out about them I just I seem to see them a lot and they're definitely not something any other buyers want at auctions and sales and stuff so great to snap up but so this is a this one is um five and a half inches I believe it's quite small and it's one-sided it just has some some info impressed on the back and then the grooves on the front and then this person also bought some you know properly 10 inch sized shellac records uh both the ones they bought are on the opera phone label so that must be a thing they collect which is cool here's a set of lenses for land camera they're like magnifying lenses in this little case and what's going on here is that these are the lenses and then this is built into the case and it's a uh, measuring tape like this uh, because you need to know how far away you are from your subject to use these lenses and have the subject be in focus so they're like they're just kind of like one two and three times magnification they're very unsophisticated sort of but I mean that goes with the whole alleged dummy proof ease of use of a land camera which is much more complicated to use than later Polaroids but um, this was just something from my personal collection shall we say as I used to do a lot of stuff with analog photography and that included like modifying old land cameras and turning them into pinhole cameras and all kinds of crazy nonsense well it wasn't nonsense it was awesome so I have all kinds of weird accessories and I just decided it's time to sell some of them that I'm really not going to use and I probably have more than one set of these <laughs> honestly so those sold pretty fast actually a few days old polaroid land camera accessories bolo i i think at least these lenses next is another button this is a really nice one uh this is a a 20 dollars button and this is black glass it's um hexagonal which I think is probably the real selling point of it besides the fact that it's quite attractive and kind of mimics a fabric tapestry posmentry kind of thing like it looks like it's something soft kind of um which is always something people look for in buttons so yeah this is black glass it's about an inch the back looks like this which again is kind of neat it's a, a box shank embedded in the glass in a cutout and here <laughs> here's a bad picture of it with a with a roller but um so yeah this sold for about twenty dollars and i have at least one more of these so yeah be on the lookout for cool victorian buttons like this <laughs> and like i said i have a video in which i will talk lots more about black glass buttons till you're really bored coming up soon here's a weird one this is one of those things I wasn't even gonna list because I was like who would want that and these came in a box of otherwise very attractive ephemera um, from an auction and they are in fact folding boxes for quarts of ice cream with no brand name on them presumably unused I mean they're unused they're a little stained but they're unused and they fold up like that 
and they're just boxes for ice cream and these sold again like in a day um, I only put 1450 on them because like I was like who wants old boxes for ice cream but somebody does of course they do silly Annie <laughs> so yeah <laughs> be on the lookout for those I guess um, here's some more baseball cards this is from the ones I got for free and this is a little set oh that's football sorry I know I know my sports this is American football this is Michael Jackson all right um, this is a set of 20 that go together and I sold them for ten dollars here's a ticket to a U2 concert in 1987 and these again I was um, I saw these in a um, pile of like magazines and various ephemera stuff at an auction on sort of the junk table and I saw like a half a dozen concert tickets and I know those sell pretty well so I bought the box of ephemera and there's other stuff in there that will sell too but it wasn't you know super spectacular but I don't know if anyone else noticed these or cared about them um, this one sold pretty fast and then I have some more that are listed and haven't sold yet for let's see Grateful Dead and Aerosmith and you know just big arena bands and stuff but they're all from the 70s and 80s but yeah this was the Joshua Tree tour which I also went to in Boston and it was awesome when I was you know a youth so yeah concert tickets definitely a bolo just look at which ones sell for a lot and which ones don't because there's definitely sort of a high end and low end on those depending on the band and the year here's some more buttons that sold these are extruded celluloid which is well celluloid's an early plastic and they sometimes made things by putting it in an extruding machine <laughs> sort of like a play-doh fun factory kind of exactly like that actually on an industrial scale and like making these twisty funny coil blobs and like little ribbons and stuff so this lot sold for $14.50 I think these two big pink ones are pretty pretty great and these are kind of like the bonus to sweeten the deal but those sold the day I listed them so that's a good little button lot it's just what uh, five buttons wait one two three four five, six buttons um, and they sold for fourteen fifty. those are probably from the 20s maybe 30s 40s I don't know uh, more buttons I listed a bunch of buttons apparently last week because a bunch sold these are pretty run-of-the-mill black glass um, antique buttons so I just listed them at six dollars but they sold so fast and I think it might be the the bird and nest is a topic button that I can totally see somebody looking for like collecting birds with nests or birds or nests <laughs> I don't know what this is I looked at it so much and tried to figure out what that image is and I couldn't so let me know if you know and then these ones are just decorative black glass with paint um, so th that lot sold really fast. You never know with these things actually with buttons like what somebody will be looking for that you're like oh this little lot and then somebody's like you know got an alert save for bird and nest button or whatever. So that's another little lot of buttons. Here's another one. This is another one that surprised me it sold fast. I, I just live in a state of surprise because these are these are brass buttons that have red paint on them and this one here this one is pretty legit that's a really kind of common Victorian button uh, this image this uh, like leaf and vine thing I feel like I see that constantly with or without the paint um, this one is not in very good shape the paint is uh, chipped but I think this might be what was attractive about the lot is is his cherries and that's a topic I can see someone looking for and that you don't see all that commonly this one's just a mess I mean it's kind of a cool art deco design but I can't it's hard to make head or tail of it with the way the paint is chipped so I'm not sure that was very alluring 
I think it was this guy. I just listed it for $4, but it sold, they sold instantly. So I'm kind of into like selling these things I have a lot of for cheap prices quickly lately. It's just kind of a thing. I, I mean, I need to sell things that are uh, expensive too. And I, I do, you know, endeavor. <laughs> Here's a brochure that sold within an hour of listing. It was a crazy week last week. Let me tell you. This is um, a brochure for a hotel in Florida, Miami Beach, uh, Waldorf Towers Hotel. And somebody obviously had an alert for this because it was sold so quickly or for anything related to this place, I guess. It's just like a typical uh, sort of what, 40s travel brochure. You know, it's nice, but it has to have somebody who cares, right? Um, here's a, just, here's a postcard that's more in the normal line of postcards I sell. It's kind of like, this is usually the sort of lowest price I go to. This one is from around 1913. It's the oldest house in Hyannis Port, Massachusetts. Um, it's a Cape Cod thing. It's just a very, very bleak house on a moor. <laughs> But, you know, that can be fun. Mm -hmm. This is a great one. Okay, this, <laughs> this map is super cool, first of all. So it's printed on really thin tissue, which is why you can see the other side through. This is Boston, and there is less of it than there is now because they filled in a lot of of this water to create the back bay which I don't think it really happened yet so anyway this is a very cool map of Boston <laughs> and this is a map of the cemetery this is Forest Hill Cemetery and very nice to walk through if you ever get a chance and what's really cool is that it also has some advertising on it and it includes this uh, marble works place which I assume means that they were building gravestones and maybe they sponsored this whole shebang as an advertising piece I think that could be the case um, and also this uh, scale scales company but yeah this very nice map of the cemetery and this really great map of Boston sorry I keep looking at it okay now I'll tell you where I got this and like don't tell anyone because I actually found this on the floor at the bins <laughs> a long time ago and it was folded up to this size like this and I was like hey what's that and I picked it up and brought it home with you know buying some stuff this obviously weighs like less than an ounce probably so it wasn't really very pricey in my bin stuff and I um to sort of held on to it for a long time and then I, I, I really looked at it and examined it and I was really surprised how cool it was and this sold for I think about 150 and it's just a really great piece and it was bought by somebody who I believe collects or deals in maps and I hope they enjoy it as much as I think they will because <laughs> I certainly liked having it for a brief time. Why hello there. So, uh, I lost the rest of the video. My computer crashed and it's gone. However, it was getting really long anyway, and I can just tell you what happened. So the TLDR is that I sold some other stuff too, and some of it was pricey and some of it was cheap and some of it was interesting and some of it was boring. That's all the end. So hopefully this video, such as it was, was in some way helpful for you and to that end, do please hit the like button and perhaps subscribe. And also, thank you so much and take care.